Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingies. Wait, who? Jingies? My god, I can't even remember my own name. <laughs> I do have an excuse for my above average level of crapness today, however, because I feel terrible. I've been feeling pretty grotty all week and it's just not getting any better. I do hope I don't have the unspecified virus of unspecified origin. <laughs> I've got a lateral flow test kit, I should probably find out. Um, before everybody panics, I don't feel that bad, I just, you know, I just don't feel good. I didn't think I was going to be able to put a video together today, but it turns out whiskey is an excellent cure for a fever. <laughs> so, uh, while the effects last, let's get this show on the road. And remember kids, Drink responsibly. And video demonetized in three, two, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Actually, YouTube's been up to its old tricks this week as well. I keep logging into my channel to find out that all of my videos have been demonetized. Uh, for no apparent reason. But as soon as I refresh the page, everything's okay again. So, no harm done, but it's not doing my blood pressure any good. Anyway, so, what's going on today? So, the more alert amongst you may have realised that this is, in fact, none other than Rita Gamer, in what is probably her favourite ship, the Tier 9 Premium US Navy Destroyer, the USS Benham. This is not the first time Rita has sent me a replay, but it, I think it's the first time I've ever actually featured one. And the reason for that? Well, actually, there are a couple of reasons. Uh, this particular battle is by far the most damage she's ever done in a World of Warships match. But she's sent in replays in the past where she's done almost as much damage as what you're going to see here today. The problem, and this is not just a problem for Rita, it's a problem for a lot of you guys who send in replays of matches with absolutely amazing results, is that while the results are good, the actual gameplay can often be as dull as dishwater and just really difficult to make an interesting video about. Sometimes it's the ship. The Benham here is a classic example. It's a really good tier 9 destroyer. Unfortunately, the gameplay tends to be, I don't want to say passive, but not particularly exciting or interesting unless something's going horribly, horribly wrong. Because the Benham is unique amongst American destroyers and that its guns are mediocre, but its torpedoes are amazing. Actually, that's not strictly true. The torpedoes themselves are kind of... Well, they're okay, but they're not great. The thing about the Benham is that it just has so many of them. It can launch eight from each side. And it reloads quickly enough that you can launch eight from each side again while the original 16 are still in the water. That's right. You can have 32 torpedoes in the water at the same time launched from this thing. That's positively un-American. The thing is, the nature of that kind of gameplay, if you're doing it right in the Benham, staying at range and just spamming torpedoes in the general direction of the enemy, can be kind of boring to watch, regardless of how good the result may or may not be. That's one of the reasons why this is the first time I've featured a replay from Rita Gamer. The other reason why I haven't featured one of Rita's replays up until now is that whenever she's in a ship that has any kind of rapid-firing guns, whether that's a light cruiser or a destroyer, and the Benham does have rapid-firing guns, but, as already mentioned, if you have to resort to using your guns in the Benham, you've probably made some kind of mistake and something's gone wrong. But whenever Rita is blazing away with rapid-firing guns on any kind of ship, she tends to twitch the camera around like a crack-addicted rattlesnake with attention deficit disorder, and it's intensely annoying to watch. That fortunately is not the case today because she's in the Benham and she's just working the torpedoes against those big old dumb battleships. <laughs> like that one. <laughs> um, and this could have been a boring, uninteresting game to watch because of the nature of the Benham's gameplay. Staying at range, spamming torpedoes. The thing that saved it isn't just the amount of damage that she does, which is a personal record for her and is pretty damn impressive when you see the final total, but also it's those big dumb battleships. 
<laughs> it just seemed to be incapable of taking a hint. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be one of those games, isn't it? It's not just the battleships. There's a Baltimore over there. Heavy cruiser, tier 8. I keep thinking it's tier 9 because it used to be tier 9. And I'm pretty sure it has a 10 kilometer radar. And Rita is inside radar range. The Baltimore knows he's been spotted and he can't see what's spotting him. And he just watched the North Carolina get torpedoed from over here. Twice. Why isn't he using his radar? Or for that matter, why isn't the Baltimore using his hydro? Torpedoes from over there? Inconceivable. Well, that's the radar threat removed. And that was the enemy team's only radar. Which makes it all the more amazing that all three of the other destroyers on Rita's team have already managed to die, despite the fact that the radar threat was nowhere near them. And that's pretty impressive. This really was just that kind of game. I never get enemies like this. I tend to get a lot of teammates like this. <laughs> As do we all. But I rarely get enemies who are polite enough to sail the same course and speed for the two or three minutes that it takes for my Benham torpedoes to actually get there when launched from maximum range, which, by the way, is 10.5 kilometres. They're not particularly slow either, but they're definitely no speed demons. They have a speed of 65 knots, which is about standard. But still, in the two to three minutes that it can take for the torpedoes to cross that 10.5 kilometres, you can do absolutely anything to your rudder or your throttle, and those torpedoes are going to miss. Like the Jean Bart B over there, who is turning. Rhea's attempting to compensate. But at that kind of range, in the length of time it's going to take those torpedoes to get there, it's extremely unlikely that you're going to hit. She's waiting for him to stabilise his course. But if she's going to fire them, she's going to have to fire them quick, or they're going to hit that island. And the Jean Bart is still varying his course and speed. So he gets away with it for now. Good job, Jean Bart. In the meantime, however, enemy destroyer and enemy submarine. Okay, the Kagero is smoking up because he's taken fire. And the submarine is on the surface and he is going to dive as soon as he starts getting shot at. So this is one of those rare occasions when it's actually perfectly okay to use the guns on the Benham. She's forced the submarine to submerge, but he's not going to stay down for long because he did not have a lot of oxygen. Since the submarine dived, he's no longer spotting, so the Kagero shots from the smokescreen went wide. This is, however, where Rita does have a rather unfortunate rush of shit to the brain. She's closing in on the submarine because she should be able to take him without any interference from pretty much anybody else. Fortunately, the submarine doesn't appear to realise that torpedoes have a minimum arming distance. Turns out torpedoes need a running start just like everything else. Unfortunately, while Rita is depth charging the submarine, she has forgotten that she has multiple uses of the depth charge launcher. So she's getting a bit excited and carried away here and just using the guns. But hey, everybody else likes to kill submarines too. So there are strike aircraft coming in with their own depth charges, shots from friendly ships with high explosive shells, and the submarine is done. And with the submarine neutralised, once again, she's unspotted, which is exactly how the Benham likes it. This is actually a fairly close game. I mean, both teams have lost six ships? Not quite. Enemy team have lost six ships, Rear team have only lost five. Enemy team do still have three destroyers, however, that's not great. I mean, the Benham, if forced to, can fight other destroyers in a gunfight. It just doesn't really like doing it because it's not particularly good at it. Those are Kagero torpedoes. Well, I think they were Kagero torpedoes. There was a set of four torpedoes. The Kagero does have double quad launchers. But they have a 10km range, which might mean that the Kagero is bugging out from that central ring. Either way, fresh torpedoes in the water. Can't remember who they were aimed at, either the Jean Bart B or I think there's an enemy Montana over there somewhere as well. So Rita is heading out onto the flank in order to get eyes on any potentially fat, juicy, stupid, dumb battleships. There's the Jean Bart B. 
Where did that Montana go? He can't be far. There goes the radar from the Talon. Reader's team do, of course, still have surveillance radar. Bingo. There's the Kagero. Oh, and for bonus points, the enemy Druid. In case this wasn't immediately obvious, this is a Tier 10 battle. That was a very nicely timed radar from the Talon. Thank you very much, Mr. Talon. Because that lets Rita know where two-thirds of the enemy destroyer threat is. And she knows the third enemy destroyer isn't over on this side of the map because she is and she would have seen him by now. So she's able to get closer and once again work those torpedo launchers. So the first set aimed at the Jean Bart B. Possibly down to luck, possibly down to good judgment, we don't actually know at this point. But the Jean Bart B is entirely capable of varying his course and speed and is in fact doing exactly that right now. The Montana, however, remains an unknown quantity. So, flips the ship around, and another set of eight torpedoes away from this side. And now we wait and see what happens. Remember, these things were launched at the Montana from almost maximum range of 10.5 kilometers. They were actually launched at a range of about 10.2, 10.3. So they're not even going to get there before these torpedo tubes have reloaded. During that length of time, the Montana could do absolutely anything, and all of these torpedoes are gonna to miss. I mean, he might get clipped by one, two if he's especially unlucky. But for more than two to hit, and yes, the torpedoes have reloaded, and how many do you think? <laughs> There's two. <laughs> There's five. <laughs> Okay, did all five of them hit the Montana, or did the Jean Bart get unlucky as well? <laughs> the Jean Bart does seem to be on the same amount of health. I think, yep, I think the Montana took them all. <laughs> okay, okay, you know what? We'll give the Montana some slack. I mean, he didn't necessarily know there was a destroyer over here. And that was a lot of torpedoes, but at the same time, it's really a good idea when you're spotted and you can't see who it is who's spotting you. It's really a good idea to sail the same course and speed for longer than 30 seconds. But at the same time, you know, whatever. We'll cut him some slack here. He didn't necessarily know that there were torpedoes on the way. And they definitely saw the, was that the third and fourth or possibly the fifth and sixth set of torpedoes and they ran out. Uh, before they could catch up to their targets. But they absolutely definitely know that there's a destroyer over here now, right? They're not going to make that same mistake twice. A few minutes later. Oh, you muppets. Uh... <laughs> oh. Hang on, Jingles. I thought you said that watching a Benham sailing around just spamming torpedoes at targets at maximum range was as dull as dishwater. And you're right, often it can be. Often it is. But it's... it's the enemy team. <laughs> I mean, look at this. <laughs> oh, torpedoes from over there. Where on earth did they come from? Oh, and there's the high caliber award. Well done, Rita. 170... 7,000? Oh, she's got a flood. <laughs> 181,000. Every battle's different. Often, watching a Benham sailing around spamming torpedoes at long range is really uninteresting to watch. But it's the reactions, and the behaviour of the enemy team in particular, as well as the score that Rita's going to end up with, that made this one just totally worth it. I mean, somebody sent me a replay the other day, of that rarest of beasts, a Radar Edinburgh, where they scored 3,000 plus base experience. So I settled down to watch a rip-roaring battle, and it just wasn't. I'm still going to give a shout out to his dad, by the way, Brian Reach. My apologies for not featuring the replay. I mean, he did absolutely nothing wrong. Obviously, he scored more than 3,000 base XP. But it wasn't interesting to watch. 
Look at the carrier. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Rita could not have made this more obvious if she tried. Let, let's count the number of ways the carrier should have known he was about to get torpedoed. First, Rita's spotted. Second, just in case that wasn't enough, Rita starts shooting at him. Then, dispelling any further excuses that the carrier might have had for being ignorant of the destroyer threat, he attacks her. Those are his torpedo bombers that Rita is going to dodge. So he knows that there's a destroyer here, and yet he doesn't seem to think he needs to get out of the way of the torpedoes. And there's the Confederates <laughs> and the Devastating Strike award to go with the high caliber and nearly 249,000 damage, which by the way is more damage than I've ever done in a game of World of Warships. In fact, I think my damage record is in the tier 4 Svetlana, where I've got 146,000, which is pretty impressive at tier 4, but it still doesn't beat 248,000. But don't worry, she ain't done yet. The Montana still needs sinking, and we've all seen how good he is at avoiding torpedoes. And I suspect, and I'm just speculating here, obviously I don't know for sure, but I suspect that when the Montana captain is not playing warships, he's a keen Pokemon player. Because he's just got to catch them all. So that was 276,000 damage, as near as damn it. Only the three actual kills, but nearly 3,000 base experience for Rita Gaber in the Tier 9 USS Benham. I'm sure Rita would like to join me in expressing her gratitude towards the enemy team, particularly the battleships, but also the Baltimore, who didn't seem to realise he had radar, without whose support this staggering damage total would not have been possible, and without whose dogged determination to sail in the most perfect of straight lines, this video would not have been anywhere near as amusing as it is. I hope you've enjoyed it. Well done, Rita, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.